Now, there are some dichotomies that create tension in school and in classrooms around the world. This is not just Italy. And, and it's these dichotomies that sometimes undermine our work. The first one is the type of motivation. Integrative motivation is the very, very strong motivation to learn a language. It's the motivation to be part of a community. And people who normally live in that community have that type of motivation. It's the motivation our foreigners who now live in Italy have to learn Italian. But it's also the motivation we have because we wanted to become English teachers. We Italian born, we were not lucky to have this language from day one. We strived and we <coughs> worked hard because we wanted to be part of that community. So teachers tend to have a strong integrative motivation. Instrumental motivation is the motivation to learn a language as an instrument, as an instrument for work, for tourism, and unfortunately, in, in a setting like Ita the Italian setting, where English is not needed to survive and is not needed uh, up until now to get a job, you can see our politicians. Nobody speaks English. <laughs> you can see the managers in many, many companies. They have very poor English. So the standard is not like Holland or other countries in Europe, where the meetings are in English, where people go to the a Strasbourg Parliament or Brussels, and they don't need an interpreter. All of our people still need an interpreter. So the, 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 the sample, the, the example that our students have is like, you know, ma chi me lo fa fare? How many English will serve? That's true, unfortunately. So most of them don't even have that type of motivation. But there are students who have that. And then we'll see how we can make them more instrumentally motivated. Then there is another dichotomy, long-term and short-term motivation. Long-term motivation is really what we should be aiming at, is to motivate our students to continue to learn English after they're finished with us. We have them for maybe one year, three years, five years, but we don't teach chemistry or another subject we teach English. English is a life skill. It's a skill that they will need after school. And we need to make sure that we motivate them so much that they will want to continue to learn. Short-term motivation is to keep students motivated for the amount of time they're in the room with you, for a lesson, for an activity, for a term. And there are different tactics in pl at play for these two types of motivation. But anything you do should aim at, keep, at keeping them motivated long term. Then the third dichotomy is learners and teachers. We perceive things in a completely different way from our learners. Because we are integratively motivated, because we know English is important, and we know it's hard work because we had to work hard to learn it. I think the most important thing is to remember that the students have to see the DVD three times. The first viewing, they must be asked very simple visual questions. The second viewing, they can be asked questions that require them to understand the dialogue. The third viewing is to check that the answers are correct. But there must always be three. We're not going to do three now. We're going to do one, because you're all very clever and can do this immediately. <coughs> Let's have a look. I've taken up a challenge from Tourism Canada. They've dared me to race across the entire country using as many means of transport as possible. It's a long journey. You're a train spotter. Yes, I am. So the visual questions, first of all concerning her, what was she like, how would you describe her? She is attractive, sporty is good for her isn't it, sporty, short hair. 
The second visual question was about transport. The whole point of this was to show you Canada, but to show different forms of transport. Let's have a look quickly through the pictures. Was there a motorhome? Yes. Was there a train? Yes. Tractor? Yes. Aeroplane? Yes. Car? Yes. Oh, be careful. Be careful about cars. Limousine. Did anybody manage to look at the questions? Who was the train spotter? The male passenger. Who has a good job? The train Yes. The train driver, okay? What is a train spotter? Well done. Someone who has a hobby spots or watches trains. Used to be seen as a very negative thing. Uh, what was the next one? Who's been working for 25 years? The train driver, okay. Montreal is a buzzing. Contemporary, well done. North American city. But it hasn't lost its French and traditions. Vancouver has a noticeably laid back. West Coast feel. What is the West Coast? It's the coast where California is. But let's uh, mm, go through the teaching of literature through a visual approach uh, by analyzing the three different steps which should lead our students uh, to work uh, on texts uh, autonomously. The first step uh, is linked uh, to watch and learn in order to reach uh, the knowledge. Um, it is important uh, for our students uh, to receive and to know the most important uh, features uh, of a literary genre. And uh, for example, if we consider working uh, on a sonnet, uh, teachers uh, should give uh, their students uh, the most important features uh, of uh, this poetic form and uh, sum them up uh, in uh, the graph that you can see on uh, the left uh, page. Well, next, uh, all these features uh, have been visualized uh, in uh, the sample sonnet, which is a final piece uh, by Thomas Wyatt, uh, where we have used, uh, as you can see, uh, colored letters, uh, highlighted letters, uh, to point out uh, the most important linguistic features of this uh, poem. The visual analysis is um, aimed at building up skill. This time the students will be provided with um, a highlighted text and they will have to uh, identify and describe what each color and mark uh, or line refers to. In this, will, in this way they will have to um, revise 